Hey guys, Janice Vaughn, letting your light shine. Thank you guys so much for all your likes, comments, subscribes. You guys are truly amazing and I am so blessed that you all are part of this community. So today I wanted to talk about um, putting together your vibe tribe, okay? Before you plan your escape with a narcissist, do that. What is a vibe tribe? Okay, a vibe tribe is people that vibe with you that are on your level of help me get to a healthy relationship, people that are gonna have your back, People that you can call on and are going to be there for you no matter what, okay? They're the people that you can text in the middle of the night. They're the people that you can call. They're the people that are going to show up unannounced to check on you, all right? So I had many people in uh, my Vibe Tribe already because most of my friends, well, all of my friends couldn't stand the narcissist and they, they always were by my side. And I understand that a lot of times people exit your life as friends because they're frankly tired of hearing you talk incessantly about how the narcissist is, you know, a piece of crap. And then you take them back and then, you know, he or she does this and then you take them back or he or she does this and take her back. It's, it's the roller coaster of emotions that they don't want to deal with. And I get it. I get that. I totally get that. Um, but maybe they weren't true friends in the first place because true friends are not going to leave your side. So I have my vibe tribe and um, then in um, September of 21, I gained a new friend, okay? And he just happened to be one of my clients and his name is Nick and he has given me full permission to use his name. In fact, he said, fuck yes, you can use my name. <laughs> He's amazing. Um, so he, he has become part of, he had become part of our family and um, he's going through some stuff. So we would invite him over for dinner. He would stop by and, and bring food. We would all, and I, all of us, I mean the narcissist too. The narcissist and Nick actually went to a Cardinals game because Nick has Cardinal tickets. Um, and he invited the narcissist with him to a game so I could work on his case that day. It was hilarious. I'm like, yeah, take the narcissist with you to the game because I need to work on your case. <laughs> I got to get your exhibits together. So he took the narcissist to the Cardinals game. And so they hung out and did their thing. And, and I, I was like, whew, I got a Sunday peace day. And looking back now, I think Nick did that because he knew that the narcissist was such a distraction to me. I never told him. I think he could just sense it. So they go to the game, I work on his case, everything's great. And then, um, you know, things go on and, and I never ever let on anything that I was planning my escape or that I was miserable. Cause you know me, I put on a happy face and didn't want, especially my client, my new friend to know that I was going through so much crap. To this day, I know that he, he knew, he knew I was putting on a facade and that's okay. Anyway, so go to the game, do his stuff, um, roll around to November. Okay. And prior to all of this happening, let me back up a second. I had filed for divorce in June of 2021. All right. Because I had had enough, but because I took him back again and again and filed yet another order of protection and took the narcissist back again after that, I, the divorce ended up getting dismissed. I mean, I was manipulated. I was love bombed. I was gaslit. I, the whole cycle just went on and on. So looking back, I mean, seriously, I should have never let that get dismissed, but I reinstated it and it was, it was great. Fast forward to November of, um, 2021. Okay. Three or four months after I had fought, well, five months actually that I had filed for the divorce, it was dismissed. And I was like hoping, okay, the holidays are coming. Um, the narcissist knows that I filed for divorce because I was serious. I was serious this time. And uh, he was trying to be extra good, which he wasn't. And November, what happens in November, guys? We're back to the holidays. So Thanksgiving. And then we got December. So Thanksgiving, we invite Nick over for Thanksgiving dinner. My kids come over, my grandbabies come over, uh, the narcissist is there, Nick comes over because, you know, he doesn't have family locally here in town and we'll have a great time. So 
prior to Thanksgiving, I had vented to him one time. I said, because he had called me about his case and, and I just, I was kind of off a little bit and he goes, Janice, what's going on with you? And I said, nothing, I'm good. I, I said, well, I, to be honest with you, I'm just super frustrated because um, I can't, I can't focus, like I can't work because the narcissist is, is just so loud and, and obnoxious and disrespectful of my workspace. And he knew the narcissist, he knew that he was loud and, and obnoxious. So Thanksgiving, he comes over and he, he brings me over some, you know, Bose headphones. And, and he, and I was like, what are you doing? Like, why are you? He brought them over to me for a reason. And I'm gonna tell you to this day, them damn headphones were the best thing I've ever gotten from anybody. Brought those over. And he looks at the narcissist as he hands them to me. And he goes, remember, I took you to the Cardinals game that day. This is my thank you gift to her for working that day. All right. So um, the narcissist was pissed. He was pissed. He was so mad that he gave me those headphones. But you guys have to understand, that's just how Nick is. He's a very giving person. I mean, oh my gosh, the most gracious man on the planet. Um, I mean, he would bring stuff for, for, for the narcissist. He would bring stuff for my kids. He would bring stuff for my grandbabies. I mean, he's just that kind of person. It was not a personal gift, but he knew that I wasn't able to do what I needed to do because he knew the situation just by being a short time friend and seeing it because an outsider can see it so quickly. So that pissed off the narcissist. And I was like, oh my gosh, those headphones were a lifesaver to me. You guys, you have no idea. You have no idea. I could put them suckers on. I could listen to music and I couldn't hear a damn thing. The narcissist said I couldn't, I, I was like, holy shit. Thank goodness. This is the best gift. And, um, so I, from that day forward, I kid you not, I put them damn headphones on and I was able to get work done. I was focused, whatever. Fast forward to December and guess what? Here comes Christmas. Okay. Christmas is ruined because he doesn't have any time to spend with his kids because he ruined the relationship with them. So of course my Christmas was crap because he wanted to ruin it yet again. Um, so by Christmas, Nick was stopping by a lot because he um, had a job across the neighborhood from us. In fact, the narcissist said to him, I mean, he'd come over and sit there and watch movies with us. The so three of us would just hang out and watch Netflix. So even the narcissist looked at him and said, hey, Nick, man, yeah, dude, like, uh, you know, you're, you're doing a job across the street. Stop by anytime. Let's have a beer. Let's have a drink, whatever. And I know now that Nick stopped by because he knew... He knew that I was being treated crappy, even though I hadn't said a word yet, um, other than the fact that I couldn't focus because he was loud. So he calls me um, shortly after the new year and he goes, and, and I, I'm just trying to put on a happy face and I'm like, I'm good, I'm good. He calls me, he's like, Janice, what's up? And I said, nothing, what's up with you? And uh, I try to dismiss everything and, and, you know, start talking about his case or whatever. He's like, no, Janice, what the fuck's up? And I went, nothing. And he goes, I call bullshit. What's up? And I lost it. I freaking lost it. I freaking lost it. So I get in my car, I drive down the street, and I sit by a lake, and I talk to Nick for two and a half hours on the phone. And I just let it all out because at this point I was trying so hard to be strong and hide my emotions from everybody except my, my other uh, friends that already knew the narcissist was um, abusive and I just let it out. And I, I, I don't understand why I did that, but Nick's the type of person where you can just tell him anything. So I let it all out and he said, all right, you got to get out. You got to get out. And I was like, I've been trying. I've been trying. I've been trying for so many years. You have no idea. He goes, all right, we're going to get this. We're going to get this done. He goes, you know what? I'm going to stop by. I have this job across from you for the next six weeks. I'm going to pop in. I'm just going to make sure you're okay. Because he goes, I knew the second I met the narcissist, he was abusing you. But I just wanted to see how long it was going to take you to admit that you're being abused which made me cry even more. And I was like, oh my God, I thought it was stronger than that. He goes, you are strong, damn it. But 
You got to face this shit and you got to get out. How much longer are you going to put up with this shit? And right when he said that, I lost my mind because I went, oh, those are the same words my son said to me. Okay, a few episodes ago, he goes, how much longer are you going to put up with this bullshit? And I was like, oh my gosh, are you kidding me? So right then, right then, him and I, my other friends got together and we put a plan together, put a plan together. And I'm going to share with you guys what that plan was. Okay. Because I'm going to tell you to this day, if it wasn't for them standing by my side and being my vibe tribe, I don't know. Maybe I wouldn't have had the strength. I don't know. Maybe I would have been 200 pounds overweight by now. And maybe I would have, um, been so depressed that I couldn't even roll out of bed in the morning. But these, these people in my life have been the forefront and have been my armor. And I am so grateful for them. Um, so I will share with you guys how my, my plan to escape started. And it started with all of them teaming up with me and just knowing the true shit that I was going through and not one of them, not one of them turned their back on me. In fact, knowing that I had them to rely on, this gave me more strength. So this is why I keep saying you guys, please do not stay silent. I tried to be silent with Nick because I thought, well, he's my client, but well, he's my friend and he's a family friend and you know, whatever. But you know what? They, they can see through your crap. They can see through the fake face, the fake smile, the facade. Don't, don't be silent. Don't be silent, okay? Um, people are gonna help you and people will be by your side. And the second that you know that you have your vibe tribe put together is when you're gonna get all the strength you need to push forward because that day is when everything propelled forward for me and I, I'm so grateful for, for each and every one of them. I, I just, I, I, I'm just so blessed. And you got people in your corner, speak up, okay? Speak up. And if somebody questions you about how you're doing, don't be afraid to let the tears fall. Don't be afraid to um, break down. Don't. They already know. Don't hide it. So that was the um, start of it. So start thinking about what vibe tribe you want to put together because I guarantee it will be so many people that are going to come together for you. All right. People love you. People love and adore you and they have your back like no other. And this is where you're going to find out who your true friends are. All right. So that's the start of it. So get your vibe tribe and I'll pick up in a little bit about how the uh, rest of it came together. It's it still amazes me how it all came together. <laughs> all right, guys, I'll be back shortly. Thanks.